In 2005, police secretly attached a GPS device to a Jeep owned by Antoine Jones, a Washington, D.C. nightclub owner. Information gathered from tracking his movements eventually helped bring about his conviction for cocaine trafficking. Today, though, the Supreme Court ruled the police action was a violation of the Constitution. The decision itself was unanimous, but the justices were divided in their reasoning as they grappled with tricky issues of law, technology, and privacy. As always, Marsha Coyle of the National Law Journal is here to walk us through the decision. Welcome back. Thanks, Jeff. All right, so fill in some of the facts of this case. For one thing, the surveillance went on for quite a while. It did. The GPS device was attached to the underbelly of the Joneses' Jeep Grand Cherokee, and the police monitored the Jeep's movements uh, 24 hours a day for 28 days. So the court ruled unanimously in its result. Right. Written by Justice Scalia. Tell right. us about that. Well, first of all, it was the United States that brought this appeal mm -hmm. to the Supreme Court. And the United States argued basically that this was not a search within the Fourth Amendment because Mr. Jones had no reasonable expectation of privacy in the underbelly of his Jeep or on the roads on which the Jeep traveled, public roads that everybody could see. Justice Scalia, in his opinion today, rejected that argument. He said that the Fourth Amendment for most of our nation's history has embodied a special concern for government trespasses into the areas that the Fourth Amendment protects. And those areas are our right to be secure in our persons, houses, papers, and effects. The vehicle is an effect, he said. When the government obtains information through a physical intrusion into one of those protected areas, it is a search. So he's saying it's different than if the police just followed this car for all that time. That's Something fundamentally different in the technology that's invasive. It's, it's actually the physical attachment plus the obtaining, the use of it to obtain the information. He said those are the two elements that you need that equal a search under the Fourth Amendment. Now, four justices, this is the interesting part yeah, here, yeah. they went along with the decision, but not in the reason, not, not with Justice Scalia's reasoning. Right, exactly. Justice Alito, Alito wrote separately, and he was joined by Justices Ginsburg, uh, Breyer, and Justice Kagan. And he felt there was a problem with this trespass approach to the Fourth Amendment. He said, for example, if the government persuaded or ordered auto manufacturers to install GPS devices in every vehicle, the Fourth Amendment wouldn't provide protection for, for our rights. So if it was there already, as exactly. opposed to the police physically Right. There was no it. physical intrusion on yeah. a protected right. He said the best way to approach this is to look at whether there was a reasonable expectation of privacy in these circumstances. He explained that short-term monitoring by GPS devices may accord with what our expectations of privacy are. Long-term may not. The court, he said, wasn't going to provide any bright lines here. Uh, it was enough to say, he said, that this search crossed the Fourth Amendment line before the four-week period was up. But he's arguing for, or at least groping towards, a, uh, I guess, a more expansive notion of, of privacy in the technological he, he age. He absolutely is. And so did Justice Sotomayor, who joined Justice Scalia's opinion but wrote separately. Both of them noted that today there are many types of surveillance that don't involve physical intrusions. And they talked about those, like the cameras at intersections that are, are catching speeders. Mm -hmm. Justice Sotomayor even said that may be time to re-examine the premise that information given voluntarily to third parties uh, is, is, uh, is that there's no reasonable expectation of privacy in that because we give so much information through internet transactions to the government for various reasons. And these, uh, those shifting uh, even uh, by the day, right, in terms exactly. of how much we give and routinely. Yes, mm -hmm. and that's the tricky part for the court and why I think this is a narrow decision and the court is treading very cautiously here because as technology changes, so do our expectations of privacy. And a rule laid down today may not comport with that expectation five to ten years. Well, so therefore, how significant, how do you, how do you parse this in terms of significance when you get a, this kind of decision but different kinds of reasoning and only going so far? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think together the opinions send a very clear message especially to law enforcement that if you want to use something like a gps tracking device get a warrant 
That's uh, clear. Right? Yes, ab absolutely. Yeah. And also that the court is is leaving, as it says, as Justice Scalia pointed out, for another day, the more difficult questions that are obviously out in the lower courts. But we'll get to the Supreme Court. They're keeping an eye on how this technology evolves and how you and I react to it. This goes back. I mean, I remember the argument because you were here for the argument. Yes. And they were talking about uh, George Orwell in 1984. Yes, 1984. And they were talking often. about the the changes in technology. So they're very aware that these kinds of questions about technology, privacy, and law are unfolding by the day, and they will have to deal with it for a long time to come. Absolutely, and they've begun to do that. Two terms ago, they had, if you recall, the, the case involving the Fourth Amendment search of police pagers for their text messages. Mm -hmm. And even there, they wrote a very narrow decision. Uh, they're moving very cautiously in this area. And in the meantime, Mr. Jones, Antoine Jones, his case... His conviction has been reversed. It was reversed by the lower court in this case. Uh, it will be up to the prosecution to decide whether they have enough evidence without the GPS information to retry him. All right. Marsha Coyle of the National Law Journal. Thanks as always. My pleasure, Jeff.